Hi guys, Jose here from Train Me Please and today we're going to be talking about functional analysis using the ABCs to modify any type of dog behavior. We will use a very specific scenario and try to troubleshoot some of our options to modify behavior in that specific setting. However, my hope is that by doing this, I'm going to give you the tools to be able to use the ABC framework in any kind of scenario or situation. The animal training community is extremely thankful to the amazing work of Dr. Susan Friedman. Susan has been one of the big proponents of using functional analysis to modify animal behavior in a way that is modern and humane. So let's get started. When we are trying to modify behavior, the most helpful single unit of analysis is the functional analysis. The functional analysis uses these three letters, A, B, C. A stands for antecedent, B stands for behavior, and C stands for consequence. The element that we are usually interested in trying to modify is the behavior. But notice that there are two environmental elements to the ABC framework, the antecedent and the consequence. These two can be modified so that we can change behavior. Let's look at an example on how to use the ABC to solve a problem. This is a normal living room. We have a TV with a sofa in front of it. We have a spot where the dog bed is, and then we have a dining table. We now have two adults on the right hand side and two children sitting at the dining table. We also have a dog in the dog bed and everyone is sitting around having dinner. As the dinner is coming to an end, one of the kids stands up and runs from the dining table to the sofa to watch TV. When the child goes past the dog bed, the dog stands up, runs after the child and bites the pants, a behavior that most of us would probably not enjoy that much. Straight away, the child starts saying, no, stop it, and pulls away, moving further along the living room as the dog is biting the pants. Let's run a functional analysis on the behavior we have in front of us. We want to look at this from the dog's point of view. So the behavior of interest in this case is the dog bites the pants. The immediate antecedent that happens just before we see that behavior is that the child runs in front of the dog. The consequence is that the child says, no, stop it, and pulls away from the dog. Looking at this information, one could assume and perhaps even predict that if the same environmental elements, meaning the antecedent and the consequence, remain in place, the dog is likely to continue to bite the pants in the future. If that's the case, we have reinforcement happening in this situation. But to make sure that it is indeed reinforcement, we would need further observations in the future. At this stage, it's worth mentioning WTF. WTF stands for what's the function? Could the dog be doing this because it wants attention? Could the dog be doing this because he needs something to do in that particular setting? Is it possible to offer the dog the opportunity to engage in behaviors that complete that function, but perhaps behaviors that we humans might be more okay with? These are some questions that might be worth considering before coming up with a plan on how to go about this specific behavior. So what can we do? We obviously need to change the environmental components, the A's and the C's, the antecedents and the consequences. Different trainers will come up with different solutions for this behavior. But for this specific one, here are a few that I can think of. One possibility is to move the dog bed to a different location. In this example, close to one of the adults. You can then ask the child to move to the sofa slowly instead of running across the living room. The dog remains in its bed. You can offer a puzzle feeder. Let's do a functional analysis on this one. Looking at it from the dog's perspective, the dog keeps all four paws on her bed. The antecedent is that the child walks slowly to the sofa. The consequence is that the adult offers a puzzle feeder. One could predict that the dog will continue to keep all four paws on her bed. This would also be an example of 
reinforcement. And more specifically, this would be positive reinforcement given that we are adding something to the environment. In this case, a puzzle feeder. Now, to make things more interesting, let's pretend that for some reason we really need a dog bed to be located in the initial location. One possibility here would be that we would have the child walking slowly in front of the dog. The dog then follows the child to the sofa. And finally, the child praises the dog for its behavior. Time for another functional analysis. Starting with the behavior, the dog jumps on the sofa. The antecedent is that the child walks slowly to the sofa. The consequence is that the child praises the dog. Once again, we could possibly predict that given the same environmental circumstances, the dog will continue to jump on the sofa to join the child. If we continue to see the same behavior from the dog in the future, we have reinforcement happening. And given that the child is adding something to the environment, praising, this would be a case of positive reinforcement. Here is another possibility. Now we have the child walking slowly in front of the dog towards the sofa, and the dog walks slowly towards the adult. The adult then offers the dog a puzzle feeder. In this situation, we have the dog walking over to the adult. The immediate antecedent is the child walking slowly to the sofa. In other words, the dog sees the child walking slowly to the sofa at the end of dinner time, and that antecedent triggers the dog to stand up and slowly walking over to the adult. The consequence is that the adult offers a puzzle feeder. We would predict that given the same set of circumstances, the dog would continue to walk over to the adult. This would once again be a case of positive reinforcement. As you can see, there are many ways of looking at this behavior and there are many ways of playing with the environment in a way that we generate more of the behaviors we want to see. I should also mention that it is totally fine in my opinion to manipulate the environment in a way that you make it less likely for the dog to rehearse the unwanted behavior while you are still teaching the dog what the appropriate behavior is. So during these learning stages, it is totally fine, for example, to use an exercise pen. This is especially important if sometimes you don't have the possibility to manipulate the environment in a way that you are generating the behavior that you deem more appropriate. All of these examples include some form of environmental modification or antecedent arrangement and then trying to offer positive reinforcement for the more desirable behaviors from our perspective. I should, however, make it clear that it would be possible to modify behavior using aversives as well. The problem with using aversives is that you would be taking a higher chance of generating negative side effects. Now, going into detail about that is beyond the scope of this video. I will, however, say that if you use the suggestions in this video, your dog is going to look at you and think that you are absolutely awesome. And who would not want that? Now, can you think of other situations in which you can look at ABCs to modify dog behavior? For example, imagine that you walk into the house through the door and your dog jumps on you. And let's assume that you don't particularly appreciate that behavior. Can you think of ways in which you can use a functional analysis to modify that behavior? And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful. I'll see you in the next one.